Thank you for joining our webinar on how to manage allergies in the school setting. My name is Laura Bantock, and I'm the Director of the Western Region at Anaphylaxis Canada. Our goal is to highlight some of the ways you can make your school a safer place for students with allergies. The contents of this presentation and related resources are for information purposes only. People should talk to their doctor about any concerns or questions they may have regarding their own health. Anaphylaxis is the most serious type of allergic reaction. An anaphylactic reaction is different from other allergic reactions in several ways. It can involve more than one body system, such as respiratory, gastrointestinal, and cardiovascular systems. The signs and symptoms can occur within minutes of an exposure to an allergen. It has the potential to cause death when someone is exposed to their allergen and does not receive immediate medical treatment. An anaphylactic reaction can involve any of these symptoms, which may appear alone or in any combination. Skin symptoms can include hives, redness, and swelling. Respiratory symptoms can include difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, wheezing, coughing, swallowing, and speaking. Gastrointestinal symptoms can include pain, vomiting, and diarrhea. Cardiovascular symptoms can include dizziness, lightheadedness, weakness, paleness, shock, and loss of consciousness. Neurological symptoms can include anxiety, headache, and a sense of impending doom. Symptoms can vary from one person to another and even from one reaction to another in the same person. It's impossible to predict how a reaction will progress or even how severe it will be. And due to this unpredictability, early symptoms should never be ignored. The best way to manage this is to know who the allergic students are. If an identified student comes to you and tells you they're feeling unwell, ask yourself, could this be a symptom of their food allergy? Be careful not to make assumptions. Early symptoms can be vague, but they can also escalate rapidly. This is an example of symptoms as they might appear minutes after an exposure to an allergen. It's easy to see the swelling, flushing, and hives on this child's face and chest. It's important to understand that anaphylaxis can occur without hives. Between 10 to 20% of anaphylactic reactions show no sign of hives, and in approximately 80% of fatal food-induced anaphylactic reactions, there was no skin involvement. Remember, hives are not always present. The most dangerous symptoms of an allergic reaction involve difficulty breathing caused by swelling of the airways and a drop of blood pressure indicated by dizziness, lightheadedness, feeling faint or weak, or passing out. Both can lead to death if left untreated. Did you know? The severity of symptoms vary from person to person and from reaction to reaction in the same person. This is why accurate diagnosis, risk reduction strategies, and timely treatment is so important. Allergic reactions are unpredictable. Common causes of allergic reactions include food, medications such as antibiotics, and the venom of stinging insects. Foods account for approximately 50% of all anaphylactic reactions, and this proportion is probably higher in children. In Canada, the most common food allergens are peanut, tree nuts, for example, almond, cashew, hazelnut, and pistachio, seafood, milk, egg, sesame, soy, wheat, and mustard. Allergies to peanuts, tree nuts, and seafood tend to be lifelong. Some children, approximately 20%, do outgrow allergies to peanut. Peanuts are legumes like peas and beans and are not botanically related to tree nuts such as almond, cashews, hazelnuts, or pistachios. People who are allergic to peanuts do not necessarily need to avoid all legumes and should talk to their doctor about what they need to avoid. Some allergies such as milk and egg often are outgrown by school age. Peanuts, tree nuts, and seafood are the leading causes of reactions and fatalities caused by food. Some people are allergic to the venom of stinging insects such as yellow jackets, wasps, hornets, and honeybees. The risk of insect stings is generally higher during warmer months. There are different ways to reduce the risk of exposure to insects, including destroying or moving nests, 
covering or removing trash cans, and keeping food indoors. People who are allergic to stinging insects should not wear scented products or wear brightly colored clothing, which attracts insects. They should also talk to their allergist to determine if they would benefit from venom immunotherapy, which is a treatment that is highly effective in preventing future allergic reactions to insect stings. Other common causes of anaphylaxis include medications such as penicillin. Less common causes include latex and exercise. For some people, exercising after eating a specific food that is not normally a problem can trigger anaphylaxis. For others, anaphylaxis may be triggered by exercise alone. Asthma is a disease that affects the lungs. There is no cure, however, the condition can usually be controlled. To keep asthma well controlled and to prevent asthma attacks, it's important to avoid triggers or the things that can worsen someone's asthma. Triggers can include dust mites, pets, smog, cigarette smoke, pollen, mold, cold air, exercise, colds and infections, stress, scents, fumes, chemicals, and medications. It's also important for people with asthma to take their prescribed medication, and most take two kinds of asthma medication, controllers, which are taken daily to reduce inflammation in the airways, and relievers or rescue medication, which are used on an as-needed basis to reduce symptoms. People with asthma who are also diagnosed with life-threatening allergies are more susceptible to severe breathing problems when experiencing an anaphylactic reaction. It's extremely important for asthmatic patients to keep their asthma well controlled. In cases where an anaphylactic reaction is suspected, but there is uncertainty whether or not the person is experiencing an asthma attack, epinephrine should be used first. Epinephrine can be used to treat life-threatening asthma attacks as well as anaphylactic reactions. Asthmatics who are at risk of anaphylaxis should carry their asthma medications with their epinephrine auto-injector. Both anaphylaxis and asthma should be listed on their medical identification jewelry. The review of fatalities from anaphylaxis show that a number of risk factors can be involved. These include not using epinephrine immediately, previous allergic reactions, poorly controlled asthma, accidental exposure to hidden allergens, and risky behavior such as eating unsafe foods or choosing not to carry medication, most commonly done by teens and young adults. Because of the effectiveness of epinephrine and a growing awareness of the seriousness of potentially life-threatening allergies, deaths are rare and preventable. Despite best efforts, emergencies do occur, and understanding the steps of emergency treatment in advance of such an event is critical for everyone involved. Epinephrine is the medication that is contained in auto-injectors. It is the recommended first-line treatment to be used when someone is having a potentially life-threatening allergic reaction. There are no contraindications to using epinephrine. In other words, epinephrine will not cause harm if given unnecessarily to a normally healthy person. Possible side effects can include rapid heart rate, pallor, dizziness, weakness, tremors, and headache. These side effects are generally mild and go away within a few minutes to half an hour. People with heart disease or high blood pressure should talk to their doctor about using epinephrine. Use epinephrine first before antihistamines because... This life-saving medication helps to reverse the symptoms by opening the airways, improving blood pressure, and accelerating the heart rate. After someone receives epinephrine, they should go to hospital immediately for further treatment and evaluation. This is very important because the effects of epinephrine will wear off and there's a chance of symptoms returning. Antihistamine should not be used as first-line treatment of anaphylaxis because this classification of drug is slow to act and has not been proven to stop anaphylaxis. The emergency treatment of anaphylaxis includes these five steps. Give epinephrine at the start of a known or suspected anaphylactic reaction. Epinephrine should be injected into the muscle on the outer side of the thigh. Two, call 911 or local emergency medical services and tell them that someone is having an anaphylactic reaction. Three, Give a second dose of epinephrine in 5 to 15 minutes if 
the reaction continues or gets worse. Four, go to the nearest hospital immediately, ideally by ambulance, even if the symptoms are mild or have stopped. The reaction could worsen or come back, even after treatment with epinephrine. Stay in the hospital for observation, which is generally about four hours, which will be determined by the emergency department physician. Call the emergency contact person, for example, the parent or the guardian. This is an example of an anaphylaxis emergency plan. This form is meant as a quick reference to a student's medical information. To download a copy, visit allergysafecommunities.ca. It's vital that any school staff with authority over students with allergies have access to this information and understand the steps of emergency treatment. Next, we'll review the EpiPen and Allerject auto-injectors in greater detail, including the steps of administration for each device. If you have a training device available, please walk through the steps of administration as I go through the slides. EpiPen contains a single pre-measured dose of epinephrine. The product comes in two strengths and is based on the weight of the individual. Hold firmly with the orange tip pointing downwards. Remove the blue safety cap by pulling straight up. Do not bend or twist. Place and push the orange tip firmly into the mid outer thigh until you hear a click. Hold on the thigh for several seconds. When the EpiPen is removed, the orange needle cover automatically extends to cover the needle. This means that the needle is never exposed or seen. You can see this in the smaller picture. Now have someone call 911 or emergency services and follow the other steps of the emergency plan. Give the used auto-injector to the paramedics to take to the hospital. Each allergic contains a single dose of epinephrine and comes in two different dosages. Removing allergic from the outer case will activate the voice instructions. Do not go to the next step until you are ready to use Allerject. If you are not ready to use Allerject, put it back in the outer case. If you're ready to use Allerject, pull firmly to remove the red safety guard. The red safety guard is meant to be tight. To reduce the chance of an accidental injection when using the real device, do not touch the black base of the auto injector, which is where the needle comes out. Once you pull off the red safety guard, the sterile seal is broken. If you don't use the Allerjet device immediately, you should dispose of it properly and obtain a new one. The device cannot be kept for future use once the red guard has been pulled off. To use Allerjet, place the black end against the middle of the outer thigh, then press firmly and hold in place for five seconds. Only inject into the middle of the outer thigh. Do not inject into any other location. Allerject makes a distinct sound, a click and a hiss when you press it against the leg. This is normal and indicates Allerject is working correctly. After using Allerject, call 911 or emergency services. The individual must go to the closest emergency department for further evaluation and treatment. Once Allerject is used, the black case will lock in place and the red safety guard cannot be replaced. The viewing window will no longer be clear. Replace the outer case and give the used Allerject to the paramedic so it can be disposed of properly. There are different body positions to consider. When giving epinephrine, it's optimal to have a person sit or lie down. When administering to a child, it may be helpful to support or brace their leg to reduce movement if required. After giving epinephrine, place the person on their back with their legs raised above the level of the heart. This helps reduce the symptoms of shock and improves blood flow to the vital organs, the heart, lungs, and brain. If they feel sick or are vomiting, place them on their side in the recovery position, or semi-prone, so that the airway is clear and they do not choke on vomit. It's important to avoid having an individual sit up or stand after receiving epinephrine. These sudden changes of position may lower their blood pressure, worsen their condition, and potentially result in death. 
There is only one body location suitable for injection of epinephrine, and this is the mid-outer thigh. The EpiPen and the Allergic devices are designed to penetrate through one layer of clothing. Be careful of seams and cargo pockets. If someone accidentally injects epinephrine into their fingers, thumb, or any extremity, they must seek immediate medical attention. Do not move a child experiencing an allergic reaction. Keep them in the location where the reaction starts and bring emergency personnel to them. It is not okay to have students who are experiencing a reaction walk around the school or out to an ambulance. As a recap, Avoid the allergen. Develop risk reduction strategies that work in your environment. Be prepared to treat a reaction. Know who the students are. Know where the auto-injector is kept. And know the steps of emergency treatment. Remember, epinephrine is the first-line treatment for a severe allergic reaction. Do not use antihistamines instead of epinephrine. This classification of drug has not been proven to stop anaphylaxis. Everyone who has been prescribed an epinephrine auto-injector or their caregivers should know how to use it before an emergency occurs. Both the EpiPen and the Allerject have training devices available which look like the real devices but do not contain a needle or medication. You can order one by visiting their websites. Regular practice with an auto-injector training device allows people to become familiar with the administration technique. It's often very helpful to role play an emergency situation similar to practicing a fire drill. For individuals with life-threatening allergies, risks can exist in any setting, at home, school, work, or play. Different strategies can help to manage the risks associated with anaphylaxis. Strategies should be realistic, manageable, and adapted for each environment. In a school setting, the management of anaphylaxis is a responsibility that can be shared by the allergic students, their parents, guardians, school staff, and the entire school community. Everyone has a role to play. In order to help protect allergic students, it's necessary to develop a school plan using credible resources, such as the consensus guidelines, anaphylaxis in schools and other settings, created by the Canadian Society of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, as well as patient groups like Anaphylaxis Canada. While it's important to provide a safe environment, it's simply not possible to eliminate every potential risk. The term allergy safe refers to ongoing actions needed to manage the risks rather than implying a guarantee or that there is zero risk. The allergy safe concept is a process with a beginning but no end. It's important to develop collaborative relationships with parents of allergic students as they have a great deal of experience and skill when dealing with food allergy. It can be very helpful to have their perspective on ways to reduce risk. It is also important to communicate policies to the general school community. School staff should receive training on how to reduce the risk of an allergic reaction, recognize the signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis, and how to use an auto-injector. This is especially important for teachers who have allergic students in their class. Allergic students need to do their best to be responsible and self-protect. This means carrying their auto-injector with them at all times, usually by age six or seven, wearing medical identifications such as a medical alert bracelet or necklace so that they can be readily identified in the event of an emergency, avoid their allergens, and tell others about their life-threatening allergies. It should not be a secret. The more people who know, the better. Allergic students, parents, and school staff play an important role in allergy management. It's also important for the school community to be involved in protecting allergic students. One of the ways to reduce the risk of reactions is to respect the school or district policies. If the school community finds that the policy is difficult to manage, they should be encouraged to provide feedback to the school administration. The school community can also consider non-food related prizes and fundraising activities. A number of things can be done to reduce the risk of exposure in the school setting. Here's a quick list. Wash hands before and after eating. Do not share food or utensils. Eat only approved food. Always read food labels. 
teach all students and staff about allergy, avoid food-related prizes or rewards, clean surfaces before and after eating, and consider restricting food to certain areas. Over the years, we've received many emails and phone calls about the typical challenges in the school setting. We've briefly highlighted some of these in the next few slides. Younger children need more supervision. They tend to touch many objects, and these items can be easily transferred into the mouth. As a child gets older, they can take on more responsibility. And once children become teenagers, they will require less supervision and can begin to self-manage. However, often teens will participate in more risk-taking, such as not carrying an auto injector or eating foods that have precautionary statements on the labels. Safety measures should be emphasized during the teenage years. Bullying is a common problem in the school setting. Incidents of bullying using food items have increased over the last few years. When dealing with these types of issues, food allergy needs to be viewed in the same way that we would view other chronic health conditions, such as diabetes or asthma. In a recent study, bullying was associated with a lower quality of life and increased distress in children and parents. Only 52% of parents reported knowledge of these bullying events involving their children. Cases of bullying and exclusion are no laughing matter, especially when it involves food allergy. It's important to take these complaints seriously before they escalate. Common tactics are name calling, exclusion, taunting, cyberbullying, and physical threats with food. Often students eat in the classrooms that they also work in. Because of this, there is a concern about cross-contamination, such as the presence of an unintended allergen on a desk or another surface. These are some of the strategies that can help reduce this risk. No food or utensil sharing. Using placemats or paper towel to avoid eating directly on the table. Hand washing before and after eating. And having regular janitorial services to the classroom and establish a clean desk policy. You'll find that these suggestions will also benefit the overall physical health of the school population, whether allergic or not. One of the top concerns we hear from parents is that older students are supervising younger students during lunchtime. There are possible risks associated with this practice. For example, supervising students are not taught to recognize the signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction or how to deal with an emergency. Teachers or adults could be far away from the classroom location. And both of these factors could cause a significant delay in treating an allergic reaction and therefore put a child at greater risk. It's worthwhile taking some time to evaluate these strategies to make sure every effort is made to reduce the risk when food is being consumed. Some schools provide lunch plans, pizza days, or bake sales as a means to raise funds. Two common concerns are that there is a lack of awareness of the ingredients and the risk of cross-contamination. If a food is ordered in from a local restaurant, how can a parent know that there isn't a risk of cross-contamination or that the food did not directly contain an allergen? These concerns are the same for bake sales. In addition to the usual risk reduction strategies, schools should notify parents in advance about upcoming events related to food. Schools can also consider having prepackaged foods specifically for allergic students so that ingredient lists can be examined. Signage is also useful to explain any rules. Again, communication is key to helping to reduce the risk. Several times a year, treats are brought into the school classroom for celebrations. Frequently, these treats are not safe for a child with allergies to consume. In addition to this, the allergic student may feel left out or isolated. A good solution is to encourage good communication in advance of any event where food will be brought into the classroom. Frequently, parents will happily provide a safe alternative for their child to consume. Parents can also leave safe treats clearly labeled with their child's name in case of a last-minute situation involving food that has not been approved by a parent or guardian. For certain celebrations, try to encourage non-food-related treats for children. 
in order for all parties to understand the strategies that will best protect a child in any environment, it's best to set up a time to discuss the student's emergency plan and what measures can be employed at a classroom and school level. It's best that this happens before school starts or at a time when there is no distractions. Use credible information to guide you in this process, such as local policies, legislation, and the national consensus guidelines, anaphylaxis in schools and other settings, and involve your public health nurse when appropriate. All of these resources have companion websites where information can be downloaded at no cost. We know that we've provided a lot of information in this webinar, but if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at info at anaphylaxis.ca. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Please stand by.